All right, guys, so it is Thursday afternoon here. I'm making, well, not pizza. I'm actually making these little calzones with this pizza oven, which I'm amazed how well this is working, actually. it's uh, It toasts them nicely, and I put chili with wagon wheels <laughs> inside of them. But uh, I'm, oh, Lisa just stole my ketchup here. Look, we're doing this sriracha ketchup with it, so... I don't know. Then I was doing some of this uh, triple X jalapeno or habanero, whatever sauce. Yays! And we're finally watching Game of Thrones. We're gonna see if this is worth watching. All right, guys. So over this way, it doesn't look so bad, but check this out. I know the wind's bad, and I don't have my other microphone on. But... just died down quite a lot but uh, it's the calm before the storm check it out that mount or the well black hill <clears throat> there's like a spiral of clouds coming off the top of it almost looks like a smoke coming out of a out of a volcano and there's this huge rain event coming towards us like you can't even see through it and you can see it keep getting closer and closer to us Wow, it's insane. I'm sitting here and all of a sudden I hear ocean. But what I'm actually hearing is the, is the rain just coming down at like uh, about a half a mile north of us. I think I'm getting inside. This is getting kind of kind of close now. I'm starting to feel raindrops. Hey guys, so happy Sunday. So today is wash day, which means we have a big tote of water hooked up to a little pump here going through a hose to a filter and another hose and then over here is our washer and dryer you'll note we only have the cold water hooked up so you have to make sure when you're setting your cycle that it's uh, cold only and then you'll notice that our dryer which is an electric dryer is hooked up with uh, a little 12 gauge extension cord which if we follow it over here it gets even worse as it goes into a 14 gauge extension cord. But I have a 10 amp fuse on these, so it's not gonna matter. Um, and we're just running the air dryer because it's uh, plenty warm out here, but warm and dry. And so here's what I've done. I have the our 240 volt inverter connected to a transformer which gives us our split phase output it's basically a center tap output transformer and then I have my two phases over here and you'll notice those two uh, kind of beigeish color cords those two go bloop, 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 and they're hot their hots go on to the hot and neutral connect conductors of that little orange extension cord and their two neutrals go on to the ground so I'm basically treating this thing as a 240-volt uh, <laughs> extension cord. And yes, I know that's not technically safe and all this kind of stuff, but because I've got fuses on there and the most it could ever draw is 10 amps, it's, it's okay. And the only big gotcha is I need to make sure nobody ever plugs into that outlet right there <laughs> with a standard uh, device because it'll just blow it up. Um, well, that's not true. Like a computer or something would be fine with it because they'll run on 240, no problem. But anyway, when this dryer runs, it actually only draws off one side. So I could have just hooked it up as a 120 volt. It only uses the 240 for, uh, for um, the heater. So the logic all goes off of the, the, well, what they refer to as L1, I believe. Or, uh, yep. So basically right here these two where it's L1 and the neutral that's what actually runs the logic and the blower and the tumbler and whatnot and line 2 only gets used for uh, or load 2 not sure what that's supposed to mean if it's line or load probably load 2 um, only gets used when the heater turns on so the most it seems like it'll draw as long as we don't screw up and choose a heated cycle is uh, for about four and a half amps. 
Well guys, I've got about five loads through these things so far. It's going well. It takes a little over an hour to dry a load, but that's with no heat, so it's just basically sucking air in and blowing it through there. So it's basically line drying, except we don't have to mess around hanging them up on the line. Um, so, it's pretty cool. Uh, one time I forgot, and I didn't forget. I had it set to air dry, but then I hit the time button on here. And it's got a little time dry button and I don't know if you can see it there but anyway when you press that it forgets about your previous selection and switches it back to normal and then I hit start and it went power off everything shut down so but that's good because it means my safeties are in place and they're working and nothing to worry about anyway it's working working good so this is a, a happy thing it'll be really nice when we have all of our you know our power building up and we've got you know, 200 amps of power and blah 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 but for now this is working wonderfully all right guys well our laundry turned out good yesterday um, I washed these panels that go over the windshield and the two side windows on our RV they were all like covered with schmutz and and rust stains and all sorts of stuff so I, I ran through the wash machine and then I took and uh, soaked them in in borax and TSP and rinsed them out a number of times so anyway they're they're pretty good now and I'm gonna run them through the wash again just to make it look like you know we care what things look like <laughs> um, and uh, UPS and FedEx both showed up today we had some temp drivers so they didn't know where we were but anyway we've got some concrete finishing stuff because I've not heard back from any of the concrete finishers that we tried to get a hold of. So I've got a bowl float set here, and that's the part on the bottom. And then that thing on the left is the uh, screed. It's got a little level on it. I'm not sure if that's a real thing or if it's just uh, a gimmick to get you to buy theirs. And then we've got the rake that you use to pull the concrete around and push it around and whatever. Um, and so tomorrow I'll be drilling some holes and getting our form put into place over here and then we've got to dig a uh, footing and put some some rebar around the perimeter of this thing and then we can get going with pouring this I'm not sure you know how that's going to turn out because I've only poured some tiny little slabs before and nothing like this and this is only 15 by 15 but you know, my, my big ones were, you know, about eight square feet. So, <laughs> um, this is a big difference. Um, anyway, uh, a guy named John Wells, if you haven't checked him out, he's the field lab up on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, he said he'd swing by and kind of give me some pointers and help me out getting the first one poured anyway. Um, and yeah, so I'm going and put this up and then I'm going to, pull out all the stuff that we've bought for our uh, power building all the all the electrical stuff and we'll make a little video about our plans for how we're going to set that up because basically we're going to have uh, well we'll show you in that one, in the next one thanks for watching see you guys in the next one bye